This was definitely one of the best films of the year, blending the multiverse concept with tense family relationships and the funniest Ratatouille reference. Seriously, we doubled over laughing when we saw that scene. It's strange, crazy, and beautiful. So it kind of makes sense that the behind the scenes would be just as weird. A24 finally dropped the blooper reel two weeks ago, and we thought we'd do a quick recap. Starting with the visual effects team, multiverse shots are on a pretty massive scale. On top of that, the film has the craziest visuals. The weenie world? The scene where they're just fruit hanging on a tree? That's insane. Which is why it kind of made sense to use a whole team of visual effects artists. Coincidentally, these artists were also directors, so they knew just how to get that quick world switching in while making it look real. The hardest bit had to be those universe jumping shots. They did almost 500 VFX shots. The team figured out how to get the edits in after. The film's got a really cool 80s aesthetic bit going on with contemporary visuals, but it was good to have a smaller team working with tight resources because they managed to find a way around it. The team added a ton of effects. How else are we supposed to believe that Jabutabaki sees the meaning of the universe inside a bagel? And now for low budget stock footage. For a production of this scale, you'd be surprised once you hear about the low budget filming that went on behind it. The scenes where we're zooming through streets are just a bunch of shots that the director took of different streets. The effect appears through the edits. He just used a simple 4K camera to get all this footage. If making a film is that easy, then there's no reason why we couldn't do it. Kidding. But seriously though, kudos to him for managing that sort of thing. Next we have the green screen. There was very little CGI used in the film, mostly because they didn't really know how to do it, but also because they weren't going for that type of look. For the universe jumping scenes, Michelle Yeoh acted out the going backward movement in front of a green screen, and the compiled final with the stock footage in the back had the same effect of a lot of movement. They used LED screens on the sides so they could really bring that rushing through the multiverse time effect through. And now, onto the practical effects. This was a low budget film. They couldn't afford to get shots on a massive scale. For the scene where Evelyn goes backward on the chair, they literally just cracked open the shutter so they could get that streaky effect. It really wasn't that strange to watch on screen. It looked perfectly natural. The fact that they managed to do that on such a small scale is amazing. Seriously, this film didn't falter anywhere. Like they actually used a wheelbarrow to push Evelyn backward. No special effects there. This is what real indie looks like. In an interview, the film's creator mentioned that he had experience with analog film and optical printmaking, so he took a very traditional approach to making the scenes look like images. Up next, we had hand puppets. Okay, this one was a little funny. The hot dog hand scenes and raccoon were actually puppets. Like Evelyn and the audit lady were wearing actual gloves with hot dog shaped fingers on their hands. One cool thing about this practical effect was that it looked super authentic. The actors didn't have to fake it. They were literally feeling each other up with hot dog hands. We don't know how they managed to film those scenes without just breaking down laughing. Because we sure as heck wanted to laugh when we found out. There's one funny blooper teaser with the audit lady rubbing mustard on Evelyn's teeth with the sausage hands. And then there was the PIG fight. In an interview, Michelle Yeoh shared that she couldn't believe it when they told her about the hot dog scenes. Like seriously, what was up with those? We're sure there's some deeper meaning, but it was more absurd than anything else. But this other scene? Absolutely whack. Like she couldn't make sense of it all. She fought grown adult men with a what plug? In an interview, the actors mentioned that this fight scene was so hilarious that they spent most of their time just laughing and trying to take it seriously. We wouldn't last a day in that studio. We'd be too busy losing our SHIT, bent over and wheezing. Seriously, Michelle deserves an Oscar just for keeping a straight face. Of course, there was the fanny pack hero. Okay, this fight was funny and unexpected. Ki Hui Kwan, who plays Waymond, shared that this scene was actually pretty hard to pull off, like he had to do some back bending work with a fanny pack. No special effects here, nothing, just whipping a fanny pack around. Even one bit of him wrapping it around a guard's neck. Luckily, they managed to get it in the second take. Well, some of it at least. Quan definitely used a stunt double for some of it. This was a 
low budget film. Can you blame them for flailing around an actual fanny pack and making it look threatening in the edits? Okay, you caught us. We're holding in a chuckle there. And now, it's all in the wigs. We were shocked too when we found out that Michelle went through more than 40 different hair changes. Like seriously, the multiverse kind of called for it. You can't be walking the red carpet with laundromat hair. But the coolest thing about the hundreds of wigs used for each universe? They were consistent. The stylist kept the basic shape of the wigs the same, so they always look like some variation of the original character. The hairstylist for the hot dog world actually took inspiration from stock photos of tax agents. Okay, you can laugh now. Like you'd be amazed at how much you can actually do on a short budget. The stylist shared that she thought that the hot dog world hair looked a lot like Shrek's Lord for Quad. Well, anyone who's ever gotten bangs that they regret getting can relate to that. Jabutapaki's bagel hairdo took the most work. The stylist had to make sure it looked a little sci-fi while still looking like, you know, a bagel. Why did they choose a bagel of all food items to make the center of this film's universe? We don't know, but we'll definitely be looking more closely at our bagel and cream cheese next time we go to a cafe. Like a ton of stuff went into that hairdo, from beads and wire to hair extensions and like a million different types of braids. It really was everything, everywhere, all at once, with the hairstyling for this film. Next up, no prosthetics, just real body positivity. Jamie Lee Curtis, who plays the tax auditor, refused to use any prosthetics for her role. What's really cool about this to us is that her acting is so brilliant that she manages to scare us with her movements alone. Curtis shared that she was glad to just let out her belly, which a lot of people thought was a fake prosthetic. That's some cool body positivity right there. We love to see it. And there were a lot of costumes. Like seriously, they had to show Evelyn in every universe. Really got us thinking about a life without Wayman. Not saying he isn't a lovely man, but who wouldn't choose the red carpet life over a laundromat? Kidding. But seriously, we went to so many different universes. They made us dizzy. And since they didn't use any CGI or anything, all they had to rely on to give that real effect of different worlds was costumes. There must have been like a gazillion costume changes in a single day of shooting, especially when you consider that this film was shot in less than two months. They didn't splurge on those costumes either. Low budget, remember? A lot of them were either from Chinatown or Amazon. The costume designer actually kept Evelyn in mind when deciding to get stuff from Chinatown. She lives in a laundromat. Come on. It's not like she wears designer clothes. Next was the space problem. They actually had something else in mind for the opening. They'd show a man whose life played out differently in each universe and finally show him only happy with one outcome. Sounds cool, right? Well, it wasn't that easy to carry out, like they would have needed a bunch of space for that, and they were working with limited locations. There were only so many practical effects you could manage. And finally, we had the cuts. When we saw the behind the scene footage, we realized why Evelyn yells at Jenny, but because they cut the scene before it, we didn't really know the context. This was a little rushed editing. In our opinion, they could have just kept the scene so it made sense. In the cutscene, Evelyn shows Jenny a FaceTime of her family begging her to come back home mid-fight. If you want to watch the whole blooper reel, you can catch it on Apple TV, and we really think you should. But a quick heads up for some spoilers if you haven't seen the movie yet. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think the bloopers add to the strangeness? Do let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button for more videos like this. See you in the next one.